Well, good, da good afternoon, everybody. This is David Gross with Condi System with my good friend Jimmy Lamb from Sawgrass. And we're here to put on a webinar talking about the fantastic new Virtuoso printers from our friends at Sawgrass. Jimmy, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing really good, David. Uh, it's been a busy week, a busy season, and uh, always lots of new exciting things to, to deal with. And so mate, I'm happy and ready to go, you know? Well, as you know, the, the Virtuoso printers are shipping. They're doing well. And we want to help people understand what exactly they are and, of course, uh, answer their questions. And so, as usual, I'm sure you'll tell the folks their questions. And we will, towards the end of this, begin to answer those. For me, that's always just a great part of your webinars. Well, you know what? It, it's, it's a great time doing a webinar with you, David, because your range of knowledge is just incredible in, in the area of sublimation and digital printing. So um, I just I enjoy presenting with you because I learn something every time. So, uh, you know, with thank you. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, Virtuoso systems. And uh, here we go. So a lot of you have already heard about this and it might be new to some of you, but uh, Virtuoso is a fully integrated system for HD product decorating that was developed by Sawgrass. Um, we saw a need for certain people uh, looking to have a system that brought multiple things together instead of them just buying a printer, then buying stock designs, then buying uh, maybe a RIP design a program and you know some color management things and, and you know so instead of kind of piecemealing it, we knew that there was a certain type of person out there, usually a startup, that was looking for something that's like sort of all inclusive, you know, and, and that's what we tried to do here. And so the Virtuoso system, you know, a lot of times people just think it's printers. It's actually a whole system. Uh, the Virtuoso system starts with printers. We have the SG400 and SG800. We'll talk more about the specific printers here in just a few minutes. Uh, it also includes a new ink set called Sublojet HD. And these inks were developed specifically for these printers. And then finally, it has the Creative Studio, which is an online designer and web to print software system. And if you joined us uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, we demonstrated Creative Studio and, and talked all about it. So these three components are part of the Virtuoso system. Now, um, when you get into Virtuoso, and we're going to talk more details as we go, it, it is important to understand that if you were to buy the printers, but you want to use Corel Draw or Photoshop, that's fine. You don't, you're not limited to the Creative Studio. Okay, it's just a tool that's included at no charge. That's part of the whole system. So let's look a little bit closer. Uh, the Virtuoso SG400 and SG800 are really the only desktop printers built for digital decorating. And they, they were built for this particular purpose. It's a joint effort between Sawgrass and Rico to put these together. Uh, they deliver a 1200 by 1200 DPI uh, max um, for some really incredible printing. Um, and, you know, that's at a higher level than what the previous Ricos were doing. We're seeing a faster throughput for greater productivity and, and profit potential um, as well. And I'm going to come back and give you a little bit more details on the specific printers. Uh, as well, we developed the Subjet HD ink specifically for these printers. And that's something a lot of times people don't realize. It. They think that it's the same ink, the same sublimation ink that we produce is the same for every printer, and that's not true. You do have to engineer your ink based on the technology of the printer. So, you know, we're constantly uh, working with our ink sets to make sure that they do function properly with the given printers. We're also looking to improve them if we can do that. You know, being able to get a little more output or maybe a little bit lower imaging cost or better quality imaging. Um, people are always looking for more color, more vibrancy. So we do work with our systems to try and bring that to life. Yeah, Jimmy, when we when we generate our ICC color profiles here, um, we saw about a 23%, I believe, um, gamut extension. So 23% is a big deal. Um, we certainly believe that the inks um, you, you'd have to be blind not to believe that the inks have more dye. So, so sawgrass has packed more dye in the ink. 
Um, how they were able to extend the color gamut um, is a little bit strange, but I'm sure the, that's, that's part of the sawgrass technology. But we're seeing an extended color gamut. We're seeing more dense inks, and those are exactly the kinds of things that, that helps digital decorators continue to improve their, their substrates, their designs. Absolutely. So um, and we're going to look a little closer at that as we go through with these individual printers where you can really see the range of colors. Uh, but just as a quick little comparison, I know it doesn't always come across so well in a webinar, but we have two images there, both on the same image, both on printed on the same substrate, but one was printed with the Subjet R, which by the way is great ink, okay, and it's not being discontinued. Uh, I, I've heard people say that they heard a rumor that we were discontinuing the Subjet R. No, absolutely not. So uh, great ink set, and then you can see next to it the Subjet HD, which has got a little bit more color there, a little bit more vibrancy, um, but the Subjet R is still a great ink. So, oops. Now, the final piece of it, and we're really not going to focus on Creative Studio. We're just going to mention it because it's part of the three pieces of Virtuoso. Um, we covered Creative Studio in an earlier webinar, and that's available that you can see um, online uh, at the Condi website. But Creative Studio, the final piece, was a sublimation graphic design program. Now, it's not on the level of Corel Draw or Photoshop or Illustrator. This is, this is not meant for you to create graphics from scratch. It's really more of a program where you can take existing stock images, combine them with text, uh, maybe some different backgrounds, and put together something that's really exciting for the customer, and then able to actually put it together on a background image of the product, as you can see in that picture. We actually have a true product there that that image was created and put on. Then the customer can look at it and say, hey, I love that. Um, and then you're able to actually print that. Now, Creative Studio only works with the Virtuoso printers. It does not work with any non-Virtuoso printer. Um, again, it was designed with technology in mind, so it will only feed the Virtuoso printers. But the printers themselves can work without Creative Studio. Now, part of that Creative Studio also included a color management and printer that was designed to interface between Creative Studio and the Virtuoso printers. But again, you can use a Virtuoso printer with your own driver or a different driver than the ones used for Creative Studio, and it'll work fine with any other types of graphic programs. Okay, so now let's drill down. That's just kind of an, you know, an elevated look at the whole system, but let's take a closer look at the actual printers, what's going into the printers and, and what they can do for you. Now, both of them were engineered, the SG400, SG800, the two different models that we're offering. They were both engineered as a joint effort between Rico and Sawgrass. Now, Rico is a proven platform, had a lot of success with it, and it's really proven itself. So that was our natural partner in this effort. Now, proven features such as auto maintenance, which has made RICO really a popular unit, um, was also part of laying the groundwork for this. We wanted a printer that we knew would work for people the right way. Then we took the existing technology and we built on it. Okay? We improved things such as uh, head jetting pressures and advanced algorithms, you know, all that stuff behind the scenes that you don't really worry too much about. You just want to know a good looking image comes out. But those are the kind of things making the images come out. Um, being able to control the dots that are used for printing, being able to have precision dots and, and accurately placed and uniform and being able to be distributed onto the surface. Um, without getting too deep into all that technology, those are all important factors. And if you can control them the right way, then you can really control the quality of what you're printing. And that's something that we've done with these new Virtuoso printers is take that to a higher level. Yeah, I would say also just one of the great things about comparing these printers to Epson has been the reliability, the efficiency. One, mil, one milliliter of these inks 
is the same as three milliliters of Epson ink. So it's a, that's my calculations. So it's very efficient. These printers, Jimmy, I think have made sublimation go viral. I think they have been the reason. And this is just practicing uh, what the Japanese believe in, Kaizen, that is taking it to a whole new level. Yes. I agree with you 100% on that. Uh, these these printers have really made a big difference. Now, the combination of the SG printers and the Sublegit HD ink provide a lot of benefits over previous Ricoh models. So here's where we can see some, some good data. You know, David just mentioned that when he was doing his testing, he was looking at a improved color gamut of 23%. Um, 25% is my number, so we're really dead on there pretty close. But as a comparison of what that means, if you look at the Ricoh printers who have a maximum resolution output of 600 by 600, that'll give you about 547,000 colors, okay? If you take the SG printers with the same output, you're getting 646,000 colors. And then if you go to the 1200 by 1200, you can get up to 687,000 colors. So you can see that is an increase over what the Ricoh's presented. And the Ricoh's had an excellent gamut. So this is just taking it to a higher level. Now, part of that too, on simplistic terms, we're getting better blues and reds. And so I know a lot of people have some troubles with reds, but we're definitely getting better blues and reds. We're also seeing reduced wear on the heads and a little more environmentally friendly. More efficient ink yield per cart. Now with the SG400, we got about an 11% increase in ink yield per cart. But with the SG800, that was a 25% increase. And this is based on previous generation Ricos. So when I say SG400, it's comparing it to the 3110 from Rico. If you're looking at the SG800, that's comparing it to the 7100 from Rico. So let's talk about the SG400 printer. So perhaps you're looking to buy a printer and you're wondering which direction you want to go. And, and you know, myself, David, anyone else that's going to be dealing with you, we're always going to ask you the same question. What is it you want to do? Because that helps a lot in defining which direction to go since there are some different printer options. Okay. Now the SG400, you default from the Ricoh 3110 and it's an ideal startup unit. Uh, it works with multiple operating systems. Uh, you can do it with PC. Um, you can do it with Mac. Uh, and you can do it with Creative Studio. And Creative Studio is designed such that it can actually work with PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. So it, it, it works with lots of different devices. And, of course, Condi has um, their own driver system and profiles for it based on all of their years of putting things together. The um, Estimated ink cost for an image, and if you look at that image I have in the right corner, that's the one that we use for testing. Okay, uh, the estimated ink cost for that, and it was printed out as approximately eight inches by ten inches, was sixty cents. Okay, the maximum media size at standard standard maximum media size with the SG400 is eight and a half by fourteen. But amazingly, this thing can actually do with the optional bypass tray up to eight and a half by fifty one inches. And and that's something, David, yeah, you might Jimmy, want to we elaborate have, on. We have our our paper pre-cut for the bypass tray is for it's 8.5 by 21 inches for people that are doing, um, say, single socks. Yes. So one of the interesting things you can do, it's a little bit challenging, but it can be done, is to do single socks um, with that, that printer. Normally we'd recommend for socks the SG800. Right. And, and, I, and if I'm correct, I think you're the, the only people that have an 8.5 by 21 inch paper. Um, I think you had that custom set up, didn't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, maximum print output, 156 prints per hour of that image at the 600 by 600 setting. Okay. These printer, printers actually have three different uh, settings for their output. And these are a speed slash quality kind of setting. If you go to high speed, you're going to get great quality, and you can get up to 156 prints per hour at the 600 by 600 setting um, of that particular image that you're looking at. 
Now, if you want better quality and you go to the higher quality setting, it's going to slow the printer down a little bit. But you're still going to be able to get 72 prints per hour at that 600 by 600, but you're actually going to have a little better quality image as well. If you want to go to a super high quality, say you're doing pro photo um, and you're using the Chromalux panels, okay, there's a setting there, it's advanced photo, and it's really designed for those particular panels. That's going to give you 22 prints per hour, a good bit slower, but you're going to get that amazing 1200 by 1200, and you can't get that with a Rico. So that definitely gives you a little bit more speed across the board, but then other options too as far as setting things towards a higher level of quality print. Now, when I talk to people, of course, about buying, you know, I'm always asking that question, just like I said before, what is it you want to do? Because size does matter, okay? Because uh, your maximum size is your maximum size. You, you really can't go any larger than the maximum size print field of a given printer. So, you know, if you look at your standard maximum output without the bypass tray options, 8.5 by 14 for the SG400. Now, if you translate that into what can I print, you know, normally with sublimation, we, we try to gang up images. And the idea being to print out, to maximize your paper, print out multiple images on one sheet of paper. Now, there are different, you know, I'm using a, a certain iPhone cover there as a representation. I mean, different phone covers come in different sizes. But with 8.5 by 14, you should be able to get, you know, probably six, you laid out the right way, phone covers. Um, Six coasters, again, really comes down to the exact size, okay, how many you can put in there. And then if you're going to be doing images on apparel, you, you get a limited area there, you know, in, in the uh, center upper chest area, okay. Uh, it's not huge, but you can definitely do some short printing, but it's not huge, okay. And if somebody wants something larger than that, you really cannot print any larger than that with the SG400. Um, me personally, I'm an apparel guy. If I was going to do a lot of apparel, I'd go with the SG800 because it does have a printer field that's quite a bit larger, which we'll see in just a moment. Now, if you look at the SG400 printer versus the Ricoh 3110, just a quick synopsis between the two of them. Um, you'll see that the SG400, maximum media, standard media size, 8.5 by 14. With the Ricoh, it's an 8.5 by 14. So that, that's pretty much equal. But with a bypass tray, the SG400 can technically do 8.5 by 51. Now, I'm not aware of any paper in that size, okay? Well, I think 8.5 by 21 is the, the largest paper size I've, I've come across. Uh, but you do have that where you can print bigger, like David said, do the single socks. But you can do other things, too, with that 8.5 by 21 paper that Condi offers. So that could be pretty exciting, some of the creativity yeah. there. Jimmy, one, one thing to mention here, you can also print small. And, and um, there are many papers we have cut, like for the inserts for mugs that allow you to not waste paper instead of ganging up. So if you only need to print one cover, yes, there are small papers that will work very, very well through the tray. So, you know, it's, it's for just such a small printer, it's actually quite flexible. You know, that's an excellent point because so many of us get wrapped up in using the same paper size on everything we do forgetting that we do have those kind of options. And you can do a lot of neat things with some of those different papers. You may see it listed as like a mug paper, but does that mean you can use it on other things? Certainly you can. You know, you, you, you've got it cut to a certain size. Um, and we found, for example, that mug paper sometimes is really good for bag tags because they become very similar, you know, where I can put several different bag tags on it together. So a lot of different options. I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of good paper options there. Um, max print speed on the SG400, which we were just looking at, it's 156 prints per hour compared to 82 prints per hour with the Ricoh 3110. So it is a little bit faster. And it's a little lower in cost, 60 cents versus 68 for that image. That's not really going to break the bank there, but uh, it's a little lower in cost. And your MSLP is around 550. Okay, and, and you know, I realize, David, Condi, you may have some special packages for the system. Um, and that's just sort of a standardized MSRP price that we put up here. Now, let's look at the SG-800. The SG-800 is the larger of the two. And it evolved out of the Ricoh 7100. It's an ideal unit for apparel and larger substrate production. Um, pretty much like its smaller brother. Works with PC, works with Mac. 
um, where if you work with Creative Studio, you can you know use your iPhone, your Android phone, whatnot. Um, estimated ink cost on here for that image is a bit lower than the SG400. It's 35 cents. But you know these are these are things you know we'll talk about image cost, but the reality is that is such a small part of of everything that goes into this. You know I see people go go get really maybe too overly excited because this one was 10 cents cheaper than that one to print an image. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not really going to make or break you whether it's 35 cents, 45 cents, 55 cents, you know, especially when you start talking about things that are 8 inches by 10 inches because that's our test size image. Now, this particular one, the maximum standard size is 11 by 17. If you go to the optional bypass tray, this too could theoretically do 13 by 51. The, don't know of any paper in that size, uh, but with the optional let me, bypass. Let me, trade, um, yes. let me add add just one kind of uh, curious thing. Sawgrass made this printer along with Rico for the world, for international markets as well as United States markets. One of the features that I've discovered is for people that need to print 11-inch bleed stuff. You, we have cut a paper size, Jimmy, believe it or not, that is 11.75 by 17 to work in the bottom tray. Okay. And, um, and the reason you can do that is because Europe's version of our 11 by 17 is A3, which is wide. So I had many requests for saying, I really want to use the bottom tray. I like how it works. I don't want to go to the bypass tray. How can I do 11-inch full bleed product? And, and now there's a paper available for it. Wow, you know, that's, I didn't know that. And, and let me tell you, while you were saying that, I reached over to my SG-800, and I opened up and went into the bottom tray, and I moved the paper. I have 11 by 17 here. And sure enough, um, there is the, the, the availability of doing something that's wider in there. So, hey, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so I learned something new. Fun, I, fun I always learn printers. stuff with you. Fun with printers. Yes, fun with printers. Um, maximum print output on this one is uh, pretty much the same as on SG400. Uh, 156 prints per hour using that particular test image. Um, at the high speed setting, you could get 156 prints. At the high quality setting, you're only going to get 72 prints, but you're going to get a little better quality image. And then, of course, the advanced photo is 22 prints of that amazing 1200 by 1200. Uh, so a lot of good output there. Now, the, again, you know, what do you need to do? If you, if, if you need to do lots of small things, then typically a smaller printer is probably going to be fine. Um, but if you need to do a lot of big things, you're definitely going to have to have a larger area print. So if you're going to do a lot of apparel work, you know, an 11 by 17 is a good starting point. And then with a bypass tray, you can do even larger. Um, then you can take advantage of the fact if you're doing – uh, higher volume work that you can gang up a lot of images if you need to do that. Or as David pointed out, if you just need to do a few small things, use smaller paper. So it, it's it's not a matter. You know, and and you know, I've seen people do some crazy things with paper too, where they take a big sheet of paper and they try to figure out you know the most efficient way to fill it up, but they end up spending you know, 15 minutes trying to lay things out on the paper to maximize the use of the paper. And the reality is that when you look at the cost of the paper versus the cost of time, that really didn't make any sense. Um, so the reality is be focused on what you can do with the paper, have different paper sizes readily available that, that actually fit your production needs instead of trying to work everything around the same size sheet of paper. You know, if we look at a comparison between the SG800 and the Ricoh 7100, you can see that both of them have a maximum standard media size of 11 by 17, or as David pointed out, you can actually get a little bit more with the SG800. Uh, the maximum media with a bypass tray is technically 13 by 51 with the SG800, um, but it really comes down to you know, the size of paper available. Uh, with the Ricoh 7100, bypass tray, 13 by 19 is the max. Uh, maximum prints... Per hour, 156 with the SJ 100, 69 with the Rico 7100. And that was the exact same image on both that we when we do our testing. The image cost on the 800 is 35 cents versus 46 for that same image on the 7100. 
And the MSRP is in the range of $1,600 for that. A little step up in price, but reality is it's a bigger system. It's going to give you, you know, more size out the door. Okay, a couple of things. I always just go over this, and you probably hear me say it three or four times. We just always want to make it clear to people that when you're setting this up, you do not have to use Creative Studio if you do not want to. Okay, Creative Studio only works with Virtuoso printers, but Virtuoso printers work with uh, other various graphic programs. Um, if you're in a PC system, you set up your Creative Studio, which is in the cloud. Creative Studio is an online product. It has a uh, print and color manager, which you install on your actual computer. And then that takes the design and carries it over to the printer. If you're going to use desktop publishing or desktop graphics software, excuse me, um, Illustrator, Photoshop, etc., cetera, uh, you'll output that to some form of driver and then over to the printer. Okay. If you're going to work with a Mac system, it looks pretty much the same when you're using Creative Studio. You're going to work online. You're going to use the print color manager set for Mac and then send it to the printer. If you're going to work with your desktop graphics programs, you're going to feed them to a Mac profile and then the actual printer driver and then the printer. So you can definitely use that without Creative Studio. That's the part I just want everybody to be clear on. Okay. All right. So that kind of ends it for my comparison of the two um, Virtuoso printers and comparing it back to Rico. And, and David, if you want to tell everybody, tell everybody about your, your free gift here for those who Yeah, attended. a couple of things, Jimmy, just to wrap up with. Um, for folks that want a closer look at the Virtuoso printers, one of the resources is Condi TV. I've done tour videos of of both of the printers, sort of giving you a um, an understanding of every part of the printer, from covers to doors, to how to set up the printer, how to put it together, all those kinds of things. And so I'm one of these kind of people that I like to study things. I like to understand. Uh, the product before I put out my hard-earned money. And, and what we're trying to do with Sawgrass is literally trying to get the most value out of the printer so that it performs well for you. Um, a couple of things that, that I'd like to add to what Jimmy said that I think are, are, are important, and that is that for the Virtuoso printers, um, Sawgrass is now offering an extended warranty. So for a very small amount of money, you can add an extra year to the warranty. And I think that's that's just a, a darn valuable thing, and I would recommend it. Um, some things, obviously, you, you know, you're hesitant about buying an extended warranty, but I'll tell you, with these printers, I would certainly recommend it. A couple of things that also, um, just to throw in that are common questions, and I'm sure we've got questions lining up, is can I use um, these inks with the old printers, no. Uh, there's no moving old inks to the new printers or moving new inks to the, the uh, old printers. So um, this is really a, a, a new generation, um, both in the, the printer and inks. So um, I've been very pleased with how things are going, um, the installations, the quality. One of the things that I asked Sawgrass to do, and they have been very accommodating, is I said, why don't we package the printer with a flash drive? So we take Sawgrass's flash drive, and they put some stuff on there. We put a ton of stuff on there to help you from videos and downloads, things like that. Um, so anything we can do to get you up faster, to, to help you be more successful with these printers. Um, so just a, a lot of opportunity and thought went into this from our point of view and Sawgrass's point of view. And it you know, comes down also to the great folks at RICO that are, are helping build this mechanism. And so one of the things I want to do is for folks that are watching the video live or they watch it on Condi TV when it's posted there, um, I want to provide you a free pack of our, our device cover insert paper to ship with your next order. 
and um, you know just a little thing to help you understand to think outside the box to to start bringing value to the printer and to what you do and so with that Jimmy um, what questions do we have well we have quite a few questions some really good questions here um, the first one I want to address is that someone said that they heard that Creative Studio requires a monthly subscription fee, and that is not true. Creative Studio is available at no charge to anyone who's bought a Virtuoso printer. So not sure where they got that from. Okay, let's see. Lots of great questions here. Um, I bought my printer from Condi and have a PC. Where can I get an ICC profile? So the two places, one is you can call us and we'll remote in and set it up for you uh, like that. Or number two is the profile should be on your flash drive. But in both cases, what we would like to do is set it up for you. Um, I think the logic there is, is we know we're going to do it right. Um, and that is sort of what our partnership is built upon, helping us make sure that things are going to go go well with your printer. Are the inks that come with the printer full-size inks? And I, and I think I know where you're coming from because a lot of times if you go to an office store and buy an office printer, they have these, these um, like half-capacity cartridges that they have in when you buy it off the shelf. Um, no, we don't have those. We have the full size uh, standard carts. Um, when you're when you're buying the system, and you buy, you know, typically your startup, you're buying a package. But it does, you know, if you're buying the startup package, it would come with full size ink cartridges. Yeah, the um, as you may have mentioned, the printer does fill the tubes inside the printer, and so. Um, you know, it takes it takes uh, some ink for that. Um, I mentioned the exact amounts for each printer on my videos. Um, you're not wasting the ink; it's simply now inside the printer. True. Um, it is worth mentioning that uh, the SG400 and SG800 both use standard size cartridges, but there is an extended size cartridge available for the SG800 only. Yeah, and my recollection, Jimmy, is it provides about a 20% cost savings. Yes. Let's see. Can you explain what gamut is? Uh, gamut, gamut, the easiest way to put it is basically the range of color that a device can uh, manage and work with. So, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, for instance, um, I would, my observation is that we can achieve achieve um, a larger range of colors. For instance, in the red, red is one of those colors that everybody always wants something better. Um, you know, getting that beautiful fire engine red, that beautiful coke red, um, and so having a, an extended color gamut set like this um, seems to help with reds and blues. Uh, again, I like what we're seeing. Let's see, what DPI would you recommend for phone covers? And does higher DPI require more ink? Well, uh, you know, as far as my opinion, uh, you can give yours. Um, I have been very happy with the the, the quality printing, that, which is, um, I believe, 600 DPI. Yes. I have not, at this point in time, seen a need for the, the very 1,200 DPI quality. If there was a need, in my opinion, it would be for something that had a viewing distance of a few inches, like maybe a piece of jewelry, uh, something that, that people were going to look at very, very close up. Um, otherwise, um, I'm very happy with the 600 DPI. Does the 1200 DPI use more ink um, without testing it? I really can't say. Essentially, what's happened is we're we're using a a smaller dot and printing slower. Um, so I'm not sure that it's it's using more ink. Um, I don't know the answer. I can't answer that one either. And I agree with you. Um, what you know, a lot of it has to do. What are you printing? And are you just are you printing a cell phone? photo of course you know what a lot of cell phones have really good cameras nowadays but 
Are we are we printing just a, a you know an average quality photo on a product, uh, maybe the iPhone cover or whatnot? You know that certainly doesn't require the 1200 by 1200. I mean the 1200 by 1200 is when you're you're putting together something that's you really want to capture the quality and detail of that image to the highest degree that you can. Um, I think that for most of what you do, the 600 by 600 is going to be just fine. And in some cases, the high speed printing, um, you know, but a lot of times the high speed may be more reserved for apparel because let's face it with apparel, just because of the background, we, we don't normally get quite as sharp an image as we might with some of the different substrates that we have that are out there. But it's, it's more of an experimentation thing. You know, it's, I always yeah. suggest people experiment. I mean, you know, take the same substrate and print it in the high speed and print it in the high quality mode and then look at it, you know? Yeah, I, I would, you know, because my mind is, is not always work so well, I tend to just set one setting and keep it there. That way I don't have to remember to change it. Um, but the good news is you have lots of options. Yes, that's true. Oh, let's see. Uh, this is how well does the SG800 feed film type paper used in vacuum sublimation ovens for full bleed cell phone covers? I don't have an answer to that. I've never done anything but paper. I would say that that um, that most of the film I have seen. Uh, probably would feed okay. So that's not the, the underlying issue. The real issue is does the ink last enough before it hits the, the exit rollers and the films that I have used here, um, they do not dry fast enough. And so you get tractor wheels uh, rolling through wet ink and it, it ruins your print. So um, it would be one of those things to try if someone has some film out there um, if you send it to me, I'm certainly able to test it and find out just how work, well it works with um, gel technology inks, um, you know, that is sort of the underlying principle of the, the sublegit HD inks. Oh, now this is a really interesting question, this next one here. Can you use the same SG printer with two different operating system platforms. I have Corel on Windows and I also use Photoshop on a Mac. I'd, I'd say absolutely yes. Um, the challenge is you've got two connectors on the, um, the printer so if you really wanted to do that seamlessly you would connect the printer up over your Ethernet network. It needs to be a wired Ethernet network. So you give the printer an IP address, plug it up, and then make sure your Mac and PC can both access your wired Ethernet network and install everything. And that is how I operate here. So my, my SG400, which is beside me, is on our network, and I can print to it from my Mac and PC. I have a MacBook Air. and and uh, very, very nice, and so, so yes, um, I would say there's some advantages also. If you're, if you're hooked up Ethernet, you can actually see the ink levels, um, you know, in the, um, so, you know, I think there's some, some really neat levels. Let me throw this in as well. Even though we use the, we'll call it the OEM Sawgrass driver with an ICC profile, we also, when possible, will install the, the Sawgrass power driver on a PC because um, Sawgrass, and this is, I've gave, given them a very long list of things, they added a test print scheduler in the power driver. Did you know about that, Jimmy? Uh, no. So um, it's a feature that, that we have long wanted. So. You can install, as you install the power driver, you can say to schedule a test print, say every day, if you're not going to use your printer. One of the things we tell everybody is use your printer. And so Sawgrass put in a scheduler and, uh, and, uh, and other features as well. So we install the power driver not to print with, but just to get to that feature. 
And of course, if there is a reason for you to print with the power driver, it's all set to go. Okay, um, let's see. Will you be phasing out the 3110 printer? Well, it's not up to us. What, what's happened is RICO has, has stopped manufacturing the 3110 and the 7100, and they are transitioning their factories or have transitioned their factories to manufacturing the SG400 and 800. Um, and so it's sort of both all the printers are built on the same chassis, if you will. Um, and, and so, yes, those printers, um, you know, we still still of course have some in stock today and they're great printers and and uh, have been very successful in the marketplace so this is sort of a a model year change and um, and so the, the SG 400 800 are, are the printers now yeah and and we'll continue making the ink as well so I mean we're we're not phasing any of that out yeah sawgrass still folks out there sawgrass still makes ink for printers that um, were probably sold 12 years ago, um, like say an Epson 4000. Um, so, so the 3000 finally went away. But and you can best believe that Sawgrass uh, wants you to fulfill it. So, are the printers available from Condi's West Coast warehouse? Um, now, as we shoot this video so to speak, obviously by the time everything gets settled in, they'll absolutely available, be available from our West Coast warehouse. I believe as of today, they are not. And the reason is, is um, there have been uh, always will be a number of, of startup issues, things like that. And uh, it's, these are things normally expected and things are going well. So we've been monitoring uh, every printer but it certainly will not be long at all um, until they are available in, in both our warehouses out there. Uh, what's the difference between the SG800 Virtuoso HD and just the standard SG800 Virtuoso? Uh, they're one and the same. I, I think where the confusion comes from is they're officially listed as like the SG800 um, Virtuoso. Uh, but it's an HD printing system. So you may have seen it where HD is referenced at around the same point as where the name is, but it's there's only one printer, okay? Well, there's two. There's SG400 and SG800, but there's not different variations of those printers um, per se. As far as just the, the SKUs you could buy, um, there, there's obviously two different configurations of the SG800 standard cartridges in high capacity and you would specify that at purchase time and then you would specify uh, for instance adding the extended warranty adding any extra trays both printers allow you to have a bypass tray and then both printers also allow you to buy an extra bottom tray watch my videos you can see all this and of course you can you can uh, buy just the printer at the beginning and buy accessories later so uh, a lot of flexibility. Um, several different questions, and I'm just throwing these all together. Uh, I know you talked a little bit about networking just a minute ago, but there's several different questions about networking things, wireless networking, um, and there's there's a whole lot that you could really go into when you start talking about networking. I mean, we, we've actually put together a guide that can be accessed and downloaded about networking Virtuoso printers, which are different options are. Um, and how you would do that, but I don't know if maybe you want to elaborate a little more. Well, I would say that that, uh, that wireless networking with these printers is an absolute no-no. Um, wireless networks, if you're printing, if you're trying to connect the printer to a wireless router, print it over a wireless network, what will unfortunately happen is the printer will stutter. As the data starts and stops, as it's inconsistent, uh, the printer will, will not do well. And so, so the printer needs to be, be wired. It needs to be wired to your network. It needs to be wired from your network to your computer. Um, there needs to be no segment where you're, you're actually printing wirelessly. Now, if you want to experiment, you know, have at it, but that's certainly my recommendation. Yeah, and, and I agree 100% with you. Um, 
I, I know too that, and this can add a little bit of the confusion, but um, you know, Creative Studio is actually online. So you know, it, it's when you start talking about things being online versus things being local, you know, that kind of feeds into the mix. But I mean, basically, you're working online with Creative Studio if you choose to use that. Uh, when you go to print, it's going to download the image to a local computer that should be, you know, um, feeding the print and color manager and then over to the printer. So, uh, but I definitely you know, agree with what you said 100%. Um, that I know, and a lot of people think that's old school, but you know, there are advantages of cables over <laughs> open air. <laughs> Uh, can you sublimate a 50-50 shirt? Absolutely, but when you sublimate anything that's less than 100% polyester, the image that you print will not be as vibrant in the color, and with a 50-50, it actually looks somewhat washed out. But on the other hand, as I like to look at the bright side of anything, a lot of times if you're looking for that special effect, I mean, some people want something that looks kind of retro, um, that becomes a really good effect if that's what you want to achieve. But if you're putting a picture of grandma for the family reunion on a 50-50 t-shirt, she's probably not going to be happy with the end result. She's going to look very faded out. Yeah, again, we, we live in a remarkable, diverse world, and so if that's what you're after, then, then so be it. Uh, does the ink, does sublimation ink have UV protection, number one, and number two, will the ink on mugs be okay in a microwave oven? So, well, it's well, you, go really ahead. not exactly an ink issue, it's more of a coatings issue on the mug, and so if you have a high quality coating on your mug, something that is, is very hard, it's going to, to handle things in the dishwasher. Dishwashers, the main concern there is actually abrasion with the dishwashing powders and so forth like that. In a microwave, you do experience obviously high heat. And so, yes, you need a good ink, an ink that will not unsublimate easily. So that's what happens um, in, in on a mug is we have what's called dye migration and the ink suddenly becomes, it comes to life since we put heat in it you know, heat to get it in, heat takes it out. Um, and so I would say that in today's world, uh, things are really good, a good quality mug. This ink certainly complements that, and you, you've got your great product. If you move mugs to a uh, commercial dishwasher, there is a little bit of caution there um, because commercial dishwashers can get extremely hot. Um, and so, um, you know, maybe the life of the mug is not as long as it would in normal circumstances. Normal circumstances will probably last, you know, forever. Can you sublimate to a sublimated garment? Um, not really. I mean, if you if you take something that's been sublimated and then you reheat it to the normal heat factor for sublimation, and on a peril, 385 to maybe 400 degrees, but unfortunately, that original sublimation can start to regas when you're putting on the other sublimation, so you would not want to do that. Correct. Let's see, is there a drastic image quality difference between the 7700 and the Virtuoso 800? I think the um, the printers for for even the GX7000, GX7700, GX uh, the SG7100, all are excellent quality printers. Um, and I think you know if you look at them side by side, can you incrementally see them as far as better print quality? I think it's difficult. Um, so I, I I think it's very respectable. I think the the new SG printers have a more consistent dot pattern. Um, I think um, it's a little bit better dot, but in the grand scheme of things, um, um, they they fit right into the family well. They they print well. I think the color um, is is the area to focus on if you wanted to focus on something. I think the the cost the new inks, the color gamut. Um, the more dyes, all those things, I think, provide an incremental 
um, noticeable color improvement. Okay, we'll take a few more questions here, and I went ahead and, and put the final slide up, which has our uh, email addresses, so if someone wants to follow up, they certainly can. Uh, let's see, when will Creative Studio actually be available? Well, it's available now, so um, it is out there. It's only available, though, to people that bought the Virtuoso system, because it doesn't work with anything else. So if you've actually bought a Virtuoso printer, once you've bought the printer, then you would be eligible to access the Creative Studio and you would follow your installation instructions for setting things up and registering your product and uh, you do have to install a print and color manager uh, in but you know it's, it's it's a fairly simple process to do that. Well Jimmy you've done a excellent job as always and I think everybody out there that um, took some valuable time out to listen to us and I'm sure there's also Lots of questions we didn't answer, so please let us know how we can serve you. And again, this is one of those kinds of things we enjoy the heck out of learning all this as well. Plus, of course, as you know, I do a lot of sublimation. So I recommend a couple of things. First is take us up on our insert paper offer. Number two is um, on our website I have a great article I published in A&E Magazine on the Virtuoso printers. Watch the videos at Condi TV on the Virtuoso printers and take advantage of some of the training, in-person training that both Jimmy and I do at the various trade shows. I think Jimmy hits uh, quite a few more than I do. I teach for NBM, so you can go to nbmshows.com, nancyboymaryshows.com and see one coming to your area. And um, Jimmy, do you publish where you're going to be? Oh, yeah, I do. Um, where am I next? I'm at uh, ISS in Nashville, and after that, I'm at the ASI show in Chicago in July. Um, and then that followed by ISS shows in the fall. And I'm actually doing a lot of different things with some different... Uh, you know, open houses. For example, I'll be at yours, you know, coming up. So Excellent. I'm doing a lot of that as well. Excellent. Well, Jimmy, again, thank you. Well, thank you for having me here, David. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. I know there was a few questions we didn't get to, but if you just, um, if you want to send us a direct email, we'll be glad to work with you on that.